Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. A man is giving advice to his son. My child, don't forget what I teach you. Always remember what I tell you to do. My teaching will give you a long and prosperous life. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. Write them on your heart. If you do this, both God and people will be pleased with you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do and he will show you the right way. Never let yourself think that you are wiser than you are. Simply obey the Lord and refuse to do wrong. If you do, it will be like good medicine, healing your wounds and easing your pains. Honour the Lord by making him an offering from the best of all that your land produces. If you do, your barns will be filled with grain and you will have too much wine to store it all. Uh, but it's great to be with you this morning. So thank you for the reading of, of um, Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 10. And it's, um, it's always, it is good to be here. Uh, and, and there's some things that I, I can talk about here that if, with, with um, home church, I have to make explanations about. But you, because it's just not in their world. And uh, I, part of what I want to talk about, to, to, just to start off with this morning, is you know, the world is so full of choices. You know, I can even re- can remember as a small boy in, where is he, uh, supermarkets. You know, the, the transition between your sort of the neighbourhood store at the small supermarket and then up to the massive supermarket where you could go into the, the store or the small supermarket and there was basically only one choice of every item or maybe a couple of choices. But wherever, wherever you go now, there are multiple choices in shapes, sizes, colours, uh, and we, we've found that because we've been doing some renovation um, at, um, in our house now, now that we live in town. And you know, where once upon a time there was a couple of colours, now there's a whole ray of colours. And uh, th- that's why I have Margaret, because you know, I, I, the, the colours and stuff, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, but we know that for some of us we do have to have the right colour and we have to have the right colour combination. I have to still get it, check her. Uh, I get her to check me when I go out that I've got the right colour combination on, uh, because sometimes I muck it up and it's just not quite the way it should be. Uh, but there are there are so many choices. Uh, we can we can see historically that, you know, for example, Ford and motor cars was revolutionary because he 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 started to mass produce, but there was only a couple of options. Now there's multiple options with multiple colours and transmissions and engine sizes and whiz bangs and whatnots, uh, and so we can get caught up in this day and age with so many choices and options. There's moves afoot to allow people to choose their gender, for example, uh, and so it's not how what your chromosomes would say or your your genomes will say, um, but how you feel. Uh, there was a guy last year that was, was um, pushing really hard. Um, he was trying to get his age changed because he said, well, if you can choose your gender, why can't you choose your age? Uh, because he was struggling to get a job. Obviously, he was too old, so why not choose your age? Uh, and it sort of it can go on and on. Uh, but what I want to talk to is obviously around Proverbs this morning. Uh, and we're, we're bombarded with options to make us look younger, to feel better, to be more successful. Uh, satisfaction is often supposedly guaranteed, uh, but it's often not actually in the end result. And uh, again, at, um, at our, when we had our nursery road property, we uh, was sort of very early stage of, of solar hot water heating. And um, so we had a, hot wa- a solar hot water system, which at the time was sort of quite revolutionary with some of the clever bits and, and uh, that was with it. 
Uh, and so we got a quite a substantial guarantee with it. Uh, but then we had some issues down the line, and you go back to the company and find that the company is no longer operating because the person, was, the whiz-bang guy, uh, had died. And so um, they couldn't continue with their guarantee because the man with the knowledge wasn't there. So it wasn't anything deceptive that we know, and you, you just need to watch Fair Go to see how much deception there is and how much naughtiness there is around and, and promises um, that uh, just aren't true or just don't come to light. So the world's promises and options don't guarantee that our lives will be, will be improved. But praise God, His does. And so what does God promise? And just cutting down or bringing down just to the, the statements of this particular passage that we've just heard. So what does God promise? He promises a long and prosperous life, to be well liked, well liked and held in high esteem, to have a clear road to follow, to be healthy and strong, and to have more provision that you need. But if you'll understand that if you've been around God things for a while, you realize that wherever he makes a promise, there are always conditions. Uh, and so God's promise on one hand, and then he'll give us the things that we need to do for those promises to be fulfilled. And so the first one this morning is, number one this morning, is love and faithfulness is the first thing mentioned in Proverbs. And Luke ten twenty seven says that he replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And great illustration this morning of that eight-year-old simplicity of faith, that as time goes on, we can add and make it complicated. Uh, and the Bible talks about having the faith of a child, where it's, it's just as it is. Uh, but as we get older, of course, we start to analyze the situation, and we start to think of all the reasons why not, or why it can't be, or, or why, what it should be. Uh, and so it is about putting uh, that love of God first. The other part of that, which um, maybe for somebody this morning, it, it just sort of, um, as I was reading back through my notes the, before I came this morning, is, is to, uh, often we can understand about the need to love, uh, that we have a love relationship with God and with other people. But at times we can have a real difficulty with loving ourselves because of our, the things that might have, might have happened and, and our circumstances. And so I just want to encourage you this morning. Uh, it, it is about loving God, but it's also about being able to love yourself and to be, uh, to be comfortable, and as we talk about these things this morning, happy of being in your own skin. Now, I've, I've just noticed here, you know, Margaret's got a wobbly wheel at the moment, and I've noticed there's, you know, there's others that have got you know, hips or knees or whatever that are, that are, are, are causing problems. Um, and, and so we can, have, we can have some things that are happening in our, in our physical bodies that aren't that flash, but it still doesn't stop us from actually loving who we are and how God has created us. Uh, and because each one of us, and, and praise God for that, we're all unique. Every single one of us is unique. Even a, even a, um, uh, a twin, is unique. they have unique fingerprints. They have unique eyes. The, the, the irises in their eyes are unique to them. The, the other features that we might see, um, that, and just with our ability to, to, um, to process the data of what we're actually seeing, look, can look the same. But in fact, they aren't the same. And so each one of us is unique. Each one of us, and I, and I like to see that you know, we're different with having you on about your size. We have different size and shapes. Um, if we were all tall, it would be terrible uh, because nobody would be able to see over the top of. Um, uh, and uh, it's th there's just things that, that God and his, his, the tapestry or the fabric of, of life makes us all different so that we bring colour and, and shape and form to that tapestry. Uh, and, and it's about that collective coming together. Number two this morning is trust and obey, God, what, uh, trust and obey what God says. Uh, and again, uh, the whole trust thing can be a real issue for us. Um, the, the biblical, sorry, not the biblical, the, the dictionary uh, description is trust means the reliance on the integrity, the strength, the ability, the surety, etc. of a person or thing, a confident expectation of something. And again, uh, for us, often with what's happened in our in our lives, and, and particularly uh, and often shaped by our childhood, is where we've had trust broken. And 
uh, whatever that circumstance might have been. It might have been a, a parent that's let you down or a friend or it might even be the system. And uh, you know, we, we're constantly reminded as we listen to the media about how the, 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 the government system in a whole bunch of areas and government departments um, have let folk down. Uh, and so uh, we can be let down by the system. We can find it very hard as a result of that to then trust in God uh, because we tend to then, from what we've experienced, hard to separate that out from how we feel and what we've experienced and when we're asked to trust somebody, something that we actually can't physically get hold of, we just sense it's there and we know or or we're told that it's there. Uh, And uh, just a a little thought for you that um, if you have trouble trusting um, other people, just remember that there's probably a a very high percentage of, of chance that you've actually let somebody down as well. We can think about the person that's let us down not realising that we've probably done it to others too. So none of us are immune to making mistakes or letting other folk down. Uh, And so just want to encourage you this this morning in that whole area. Uh, And just, you know, the lowest, if we think about it, the lowest form of trust is law. So that's where we have to do something because we, the law says we have to do it. So there's no trust in that. Um, We just have to do it because we have to do it. Whereas this whole, the whole, uh, what we're talking about this morning is trust in God, is trusting in, in His ability to know best, and we'll talk a bit, a, a bit more about that as we go on. But it can be um, quite a difficult thing for us to do. Uh, and so, again, maybe your opportunity after the service, if, if you've had uh, issues like that, has been, that's been part of your life where um, even maybe a spouse or somebody close or a, you know, a relative or a, or a parent or whatever has let you down and you still find it very difficult to, to when it come, we come to talk about trusting God, you find it difficult to do that, then we'd love to pray for you um, and, and just see God break through in that area in your life. Number three this morning is, do not be wise in your own eyes. And here's another good question to ponder this morning. Will you allow God to control your circumstances? Will you allow him to control your circumstances? Because naturally we want to do it ourselves or organize it ourselves because we think through experience that we know the best result. We know the result we would like to get. Uh, but how many of us can testify that, that the result that we thought was going to be the right one and if we had the ability to do it, we would have done and then God's done it in a different way and you look back at it and think, well, oh man, I'm pleased he knew better uh, because I've, I've ended up with just a, a, such a better result than I would have ever imagined uh, in my own humanness. And so I just want to encourage you that this morning we can spend our lives trying to get our life under control or even trying to get out of someone else's control. Um, and we are, sometimes can only want God to intervene in our lives when our life is out of control. So as soon as it comes to... Um, we, we, we just want to take control of it ourselves when everything's going right. And um, it's interesting too, as I've seen God radically transform people's lives because of where they've been and the, and the situation that they've come from, and even that initial trans, uh, transformation has been quite significant, they then sort of settle there and, and don't let God, you know, sort of take, uh, take God out of the equation. They, they're still saved, they're still, you know, God is very active, sort of active in their life, but they don't ever go on to those next level or those higher levels of what God actually has for them. And I just want to encourage you this morning. It, it is about um, allowing God to control you all the way through. And while you may have had a tr- tremendous transformation in your life when you've come to faith, there's so much more. And so that we've never got there, no matter what our age and stage, God has still got something more for us, something, uh, you know, a greater liberty or, a, or, or just you know, things for us to do or just whatever it might be. But it's, it's, um, it's greater than the here and now as well. It's looking forward to too, obviously, to what God has for us for eternity. So I just want to encourage you this morning too, uh, to allow to God to control the high points of your life and the low points of your life. But it, when you're in the high points, allow Him to be there as well, not just when things aren't going well. So number four this morning is to fear the Lord and to shun evil. Uh, here's another good question this morning. Are you prepared to obey when you don't understand? 
when it doesn't make sense. And it aligns up quite closely to what I just said before, where where we can look at the circumstance and uh, and we think we we've got it sussed. But that's what the fear of the Lord is. It's not about this. <gasps> it's about just that reverence of allowing Him or knowing that He knows best and, and that He's got a, a plan and a purpose for our lives that is already mapped out. Uh, and it's up to us as to whether it's the A, B, or C plan. Uh, but there is a plan, and um, and. It, you know, I've, I've talked to people in the past that have really struggled with allowing sort of that, that God, and so I, I imagine my life is a bit like standing here with the with the the blue runner down down the um, down. That's sort of my life, and so for me, it's not this as I as I move through life, really tight and no room to move. But there's the ability for me to move around within those boundaries of God's boundaries that he places in our lives. But it's the ability to move around within that boundary simply because of our humanness. Uh, and I've, I've had folk um, over the years that are, are, are just so scared uh, that they won't even take a step. They won't allow God to, uh, they're too scared to have anything sort of happen in their lives in case they get it wrong and God's wrath drops on them. But I, I've yet to see really God's wrath drop onto somebody that with the best intentions um, wavered a little bit. And we all waver within our faith. We have moments where, where we have a really strong faith and there's times when we're really questioning it and we've got, there's times when we're, we're, we're physically active and there's times when we can't be physically active as much as we like. And that's, that's what life is like. And I remember a, 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 actually a pastor friend, um, even quite well into life, went off and, um, and went off to a, sort of like a retreat thing for a week and came back sort of quite radically changed because he'd always pictured his ministry life as one thing. And uh, he came to the revelation that life is like a, a playground. Um, and our ministry life could be like that too. So there's time when we might be on the, the merry-go-round. So one part of our ministry might be that. And then there's the opportunity to go and hop on a swing. So we might do something else. And so th- there is colour and shape and form. And, and we've found that over the years too, where we've had times where we've been involved in children's ministry and then there'll be the time to be involved in something else and so God gives us these different opportunities it's not just one colour and one thing throughout our lives and think about it as a playground it's a place to enjoy it and to have fun and that's what God's all about too it's about having his fun as well you see the thing is our confidence usually comes from uh, after we understand but what, we're, what, what God's asking us to do is to put our confidence in Him first when we don't understand, necessarily understand what it's going to be. It's not what I think, but who do I trust? And so I want to encourage you this morning, it's about putting that trust in God. And Psalm 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, and don't grow weary doing well. And that's something that I, and you know, looking around the room, we need to remind ourselves, don't give up doing good. Um, and I have to keep reminding myself that there are, there are more things for God. When I want to just retrench and sit in the sun and read a book, there are, which is part of what we get to do, but there is still stuff that we, can, we, we need to be doing. There's still, God's still got things for every single one of us in this room, whether it's, um, and I'm sort of more and more conscious of, of you know, waking in the middle of the night and praying for things that are going around the world, praying for, you know, we've, we've, um, we don't have a sort of friends that are, that are in the mission field or involved in things overseas and just you, you wake up and, and that's just as vital as going out and actually knocking on a door or doing something um, you know, physical. So just again want to encourage us that, that we don't give up doing well. And number five this morning is honour the Lord with your wealth. So am I willing to have skin in the game? Uh, my money and my first fruits? It's easy for us to have an opinion when we don't have skin in the game. And uh, it, it's interesting as you, if you watch social media and, uh, and, and people that have always got um, an opinion about, for example, how council should be running something or how the government should be doing something, but they don't actually actively involve themselves in the process. They're quite happy to sit on the outside and, and throw the lob the thoughts or the ideas, but, but don't uh, or are not prepared to actually, as we, we would say, have skin in the game. So it's a bit like the, 
you know, um, watching a, a, a sports sports game. You know, are you sitting up high in the uh, up in the stands and just shouting, or are you actually down there with the with the with the as a coach? Um, you probably some of them a few people shouting last night with it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there was a silence the week before, but there's probably more shouting this week, I suspect. Um, but it's about being still involved in the in the game. It's still being involved in what you can do within your church family. It's about what you can be, you can do what even small things you can do, and about how because these, these and trying to get our folk to understand um, that that just to rock up on a on a Sunday on a Sunday morning don't really want to get involved in hosting or helping in the kitchen or, or any of those other practical things because they, for whatever reason. But understanding that there's a whole, for you to come in here this morning, there's a whole lot of things that have happened in the background by a whole lot of people and just being part of that. I'm sure you are, but just encouraging you in that process that it's, because um, it's, you can tend to forget about it. And so all those that are involved in serving, good on you. And may you continue to do so. So we need to do what we have the ability to do and then allow God to do the rest. So what does God promise when we trust him? Just as I bring it to a close this morning, a long and prosperous like life, well liked and held in high esteem, a clear road to follow, being healthy and strong and more provision than you need. And so this just, we'll just take a moment now even, but just what aspect of my life do I need to live, lift my level of trust to? So what is it, so I just encourage you, just close your eyes for a moment. Holy Spirit, we just uh, invite you to move. So what areas am I, maybe am I struggling in? What areas am I wanting to see breakthrough in this morning? What is it I'm not sure, or, you know, I just, I'm just not sure whether I can let it go in case the way that it work, God works it out is not what I'm anticipating or, or I, I have a little bit of hesitation because it, it might cause me, I might have to do something or whatever it might be. But we, we know that the, the, the tapes that we can play to ourselves or that the enemy loves to play to ourselves to limit what we do and, and that expectation of seeing God come through. Lord, every single one of us have times when we step away from totally trusting you and, and try to do it ourselves. And while you do call us to do things, Lord, I just pray this morning for wisdom of knowing at that point where we do what we need to do, but the, the next point of allowing you to do what you need to do. And so, Lord, each one of us have facing different circumstances. Each one of us are in different situations. And so Lord, I just release faith to a new level in every life in this room right now in Jesus' name. Even for those that really haven't surrendered your, their lives to you, I pray, Lord, that this would just be another piece of the jigsaw puzzle to bring them to that place. Of being able to say, Lord, I want you to take control. Even though things are going really well, I want you to take control. Jesus' name. For those that I struggle with that whole trust thing. I just break the power of the things of the past in Jesus' name. That even just right now there'd be just a real new sense of liberty, a new release from those things, those words, those actions. We break them off their lives in Jesus' name. And maybe just a fresh simplicity of faith. Not complicating. Your word says, these are the promises that you've given me. 
And I just accept them in Jesus' name. So Lord, I just pray abundant blessing upon every life that's here, every family that's represented. Pray for those grandparents that are praying for grandchildren, even for children and great-grandchildren. Grandchildren. The faithfulness to continue. To keep praying despite the circumstance. Jesus' name. Amen.